Hi, my name is Henry. I'm the developer of Professor Bubbles. And right here behind my back is where the magic is happening. Now, if you have followed my previous devlogs, you can immediately tell that I have switched from this very safe scripted devlog format into this, well, I guess this is more traditional uh, vlogging style. So I'm quite excited to see how you guys like this change. Now that said, um, today I would like to show you the entire process, how I created the ninja enemy from the beginning to the end. So let's jump right to the Kodo engine. Okay, here we go. We are in Gedo and this is the enemy I would like to show you today. I think the easiest way to do that is I simply show you this sample scene I made. And as you can see, the enemy is just floating in place. And as I go towards the enemy, there is a sort aiming uh, period and after that the ninja is shooting a lightning strike. So now that you know what this enemy is all about, um, I would like to explain you how this enemy came to be. So it was June uh, this year, it was end of June, right before some summer holidays and I was just doodling around in Azeprite. And I came with this very shape, which is now the first uh, frame of the idle animation loop. And unlike my typical doodles in Azeprite, this came out pretty well. So I decided that this would be an enemy in Professor Bubbles. So the next thing I did, I expanded this doodle into this um, idle animation loop and this came out pretty well as well. I mean, I'm very happy um, on the fluidity, if that's the word, fluidity of this animation. It feels very fluid, that's what I wanted to say. And also it seems to me that the cloth of the ninja is behaving almost like a real cloth. Now then, after this idle animation was done, I admit I didn't touch the ninja enemy for at least one and a half months. There were summer holidays in between, and after the summer holidays I went on with the level design and other things, so I kind of forget about this um, enemy. I didn't know um, at this point what the ninja should do. Should it run around? Should it just levitate? until I came across this um, Kodo visual effect repository from GD Quest. Um, this is basically a collection of different visual effects made in Kodo and especially this very choosy looking um, laser visual effect was something which caught my eye. And while I was playing around with this demo, which looks quite nice, all of a sudden I figured out what was the missing piece of this ninja enemy puzzle. And this missing piece is exactly this very nice looking lightning strike. So I decided that this would be the attack type of the ninja. Uh, so the ninja would just be stationary in one place, that's easy to implement. There will be some kind of charging state to give a player some time uh, to recognize that there is a ninja, and then just simply boom, a lightning strike towards the player. Okay, so at this point I already had all the necessary ingredients. I had the graphics of the ninja, I had the plan what the ninja should do. So the third step was to go finally to Godot and start crafting the enemy scene. 
And now, luckily, I didn't have to start from scratch from an empty scene because I have crafted this uh, kind of like a template scene which consists of this kinematic body 2D node as a parent a node and then a collection of different nodes which are kind of beneficial while crafting different kind of uh, kinematic enemies. So at next let's have a look at the different nodes I've added to the template. And the first one is this player scanner, which is basically area 2D. And let me show you um, what it's all about. So we have this big circular shape, collision shape. And this is nothing else than the scanner for the player. So if the player appears inside this shape, there is a signal sent towards the enemy that the player was found. The next thing I implemented was the visuals. And the first thing here was importing the animations I did in Asaprite. And this was very easily done with this very handy Asaprite importer plugin. And after the animations were imported, uh, I went on to implement this a fancy background glow animation. This turned out quite well. And this is connected now to the charging state. So what's basically happening here is I have this um, background glow sprite, which is this fancy purple background. And what this animation player does is it simply modulates the alpha value of the background glow sprite so we achieve this kind of nice looking background glow. And then I wanted to add this, this kind of electrical feeling to the charging state and I implemented these CPU particles which are randomly spawned around the ninja and they are attracted towards the center of the ninja. And the next thing I did was I imported this lightning strike node from the GD Quest tutorial. And what this uh, lightning strike basically is, it is a Raycast 2D node. So what happens is um, from the spawning point up to the collision point, there is a collision detection performed. And if there is a collision, first then the lightning strike visuals are shown. So what I ended up doing was um, I spawned two lightning strikes, one from the tip of the left hand and one from the tip of the right hand towards the aiming point. And this worked pretty well. I was ready, I think, in 15 minutes. But the additional thing which I had to modify, I needed to make the lightning strikes dangerous. And this was quite easy to do as well, because these right lightning strikes are raycasts, which means that I can simply detect um, collisions between the lightning strikes and the player while the visuals are on and should there be a collision between lightning strike and the player i can signal player damage signal towards the player so the player gets damaged so after i managed to create all these uh, necessary nodes to the ninja scene the last thing i needed to do was to populate the enemy state machine so you can see I have implemented um, idle state, charging state and the attack state. And because the logic of this enemy is quite simple, what happens is the ninja goes first to the idle state. Once the player is found, we go to the charging state and show the background glow animation. And after some time, we jump to attack state, we spawn the lightning strike and go back to the idle state. So that is how this ninja player was implemented in Godot.
So after all hard work was done in Ghetto, I was finally ready to start with the fun part of the game dev, which is the playtesting. And the thing I recognized was that the amount of tension can be tuned by selecting different values for the charging state duration. So for instance here, the duration for the uh, charging state is 0 seconds. So there's a very minimal delay and as you can see I have already difficulties uh, while collecting these candy canes here. So what I ended up doing was trying different charging time parameters and for instance here I have increased the charging time up to 3 seconds and now you can see that this setting is quite easy so in a, within three seconds i can move quite freely around i can do a lot of things and the ninja lightning strikes are kind of harmless i can always recognize where is the charging aiming point and i can move away from that point so the main goal of this um, playtesting part was to find kind of like good balance for this charging time value and I figured out that by setting the charging time to one second we achieve kind of a nice uh, platforming attention which is not too hard it's not impossible but it's also not boring so with this one second I have the feeling that I need to give some pace, I need to move around, but I don't have to uh, rage quit this game because it's impossible. So talking about rage quitting, um, I'm a huge fan of very hard platforming games. Talking about the Kaizo levels in Super Mario Maker 2, and so I created this insanely hard passes with lots of ninjas. As you can see, I have lots of difficulties while uh, trying to avoid the lightning strikes. So for one successful run, which is to collect the one red patch, which is hidden up there, uh, it takes me approx approximately 20 tries. So all in all, I have pretty good feeling uh, of this ninja as an enemy because I can adjust the level of tension with this uh, enemy quite well, ranging from almost boring difficulty up to the very insane difficulty which you can see here. Alright, so now you know pretty precisely how I created the ninja enemy into the Professor Bubbles. Uh, I have to admit I had quite a lot of fun while developing, first in Asaprite, pixeling old animations. Um, development in Godot was quite easy given all the scripts and templates I had there. And of course, as the last part, I had so much fun playtesting this enemy. Um, at this point, I would like to also remind you that I am currently live streaming the development of this game live in Twitch three times a week. So feel free to drop by and have a chat with me if you will. Otherwise, you can also help me out by testing the alpha demo, which is in itch.io. And I would be very, very happy to receive any kind of feedback, which you can leave on Discord. I will leave the links for Twitch, itch.io and Discord down below. Okay, so that was all for today. I wish you well and I hope to see you in the next devlog video. Bye bye.